Hi Virgo, welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for April of 2021. Well, Jupiter is moving along through Aquarius this year, bringing growth and expansion, confidence and joy to whatever area of your chart Aquarius occupies. And for you, that is probably going to be the sixth house. And I say probably because if you have late Virgo rising, then Jupiter would actually be in your fifth house. But I'm going to say a little bit about both. So if Jupiter is traveling through your sixth house, that's the arena of health, work, and service. And Jupiter is bringing luck and opportunity and confidence too to this arena. It's a really great time to improve relations with your workmates, to um, grow your customer list or your client list. Um, it's a really good time also for your health routines and your health in general, giving you the confidence or maybe you know, bringing the right people towards you to improve your health situation. If Jupiter is in your fifth house, that is the house of fun, creativity, play, self-expression. And uh, Jupiter in that house brings lack natural leadership qualities, which is a wonderful thing. And, um, and also an abundance of fun and relaxation. So it's really great to enjoy that while Jupiter is there. You can find out more about Jupiter in Aquarius specifically in uh, the video that we made about it on our 2021 news playlist on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology. Well, Julia, you've got some news, I think, for the Virgos of the world about uh, Mercury, Venus, and Mars. What's that good stuff? Mm, well, that's a good question. Hey, Virgo. So I'll begin with Mercury. That's the planet of communication. It also represents how we think, how we strategize. And at the very beginning of the month on April 3rd, it's going to shift into your eighth house of other people's money. So this is the house of uh, money you share with people close to you, like through uh, joint credit cards or inheritance with family and it's also the money that you share with institutions like banks so it can rule all things like taxes and investments and uh, mortgages and loans all that type of stuff so with mercury coming into this house this is a time of really kind of strategizing and maybe having to organize the, the money that you um, share with other people whether that's people close to you or even tax season too getting everything all your little ducks in a row the eighth house is also a very hidden house of the zodiac. So when Mercury comes in here, um, it's a really great time for any type of research or investigation that you might need to do. Like if you're in school writing a paper or there's something in your personal or professional life that you want to look into more. Mercury is moving very fast this month. So on April 19th, it's going to jump into your ninth house of the higher mind. This is um, also Jupiter's house, the planet that rules all the things that expand us. Um, so this is also a wonderful time if you're in school to kind of learn something to broaden your horizons. And even if you're not in school, your mind will just be more drawn to sort of distant and far away places. Maybe you'll be thinking about your next tra trip or uh, travel plans that you'd like to go on. Then Venus, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships, uh, begins the month in your eighth house, uh, you know, where Mercury starts the month too. And Venus brings a little bit of luck, a little bit of diplomacy and pleasure wherever she goes. So you might have a little luck in terms of dealing with other people's money. Uh, uh, so, you know, maybe maybe somebody in your family gifts you with something, or maybe you get a little luck with your taxes, maybe a little bit more money is coming back to you than you thought. Um, and this is also, uh, since the eighth house is a very intimate house, um, this can be a time of just merging more deeply with your partner, whether that's sexually or psychologically too. Then uh, on April 14th, uh, Venus is going to go into your ninth house. Again, that's the house of the higher mind. It re represents foreign places and travel. So if you're partnered, you guys are going to want to do something that are that it feels very expansive. Maybe that's listening to a TED talk together, or maybe that's going on a little trip together to just sort of get out there and kind of broaden your horizons. Um, and if you're single, then you might find that you're getting a crush on somebody who comes from a really, really different background than you too. Then the final planet I want to talk about is Mars. That's a planet of action and activity, and it starts the month in your 10th house of career. This house also rules authority figures as well. And Mars can have a time, you know, it can be a little bit conflict prone at times. So you might be butting heads with the authority figures in your life, whether those are your bosses, your parents, your teachers, even government officials you might have to deal with could be ruled by this house. Um, but the best way to use this transit is just to 
put all your energy and all your drive into your career, whether you're searching for your next career or you've got some sort of project to do on your own. Then Mars on the 23rd is going to move into your 11th house. This is the house of friends, uh, any groups that you're a part of, which could include teams, societies, clubs, uh, organizations. And with Mars coming in here, you might find that you're, you're actively just kind of spending a little bit more time with the groups that you're a part of. Again, Mars can sort of bring conflict with him wherever he goes. Uh, and it's a bit competitive too. So you might be feeling a little bit more competition among your friends or maybe even within the groups that you're a part of. Mm, yep, very possible. Well, this month there's a general procession from uh, Aries into Taurus. And at the beginning of the month, uh, we see uh, a gathering of planets here in Aries and also some in Pisces too. And over the course of the month, we see that those planets just get even more densely packed into Aries. And then uh, gradually as the month goes on, they sort of gather into Taurus. And, um, and this is also shown in the moons of this month. The first of this month's moons is um, a new moon in Aries right here. You see it, and that falls in your eighth house. This moon uh, being in Aries is going to bring up a lot of themes of assertion, um, being direct, uh, possibly a few emotional explosions. Aries is ruled by Mars after all. Um, and so we're calling this moon assertive, but also relatable because of Venus's involvement. So it's got some nice, um, and the, the involvement of Juno too, uh, in a trine with that moon. And so there are a lot of, um, you know, sweet relationship themes wrapped up with this moon too. And uh, that falling in your eighth house might mean that you feel some emotions come up. And also it might be a time to plant seeds in that arena that, Ju uh, that Julia was talking about. The finances that you share with other individuals or with institutions. So now might be the time to plant some seeds that will enable you to get completely out of debt or that will enable you to, um, um, you know, build really good credit or uh, formulate a better financial agreement with your spouse or custody agreements with your ex-spouse, you know, so um, it might be time to assert yourself about that, but sprinkle some sugar on top. So um, some days after that, on the 19th, we see a seasonal change as the sun exits Aries, there it is, and then moves into Taurus and, um, and bringing us to the season of flowers and beautiful smells and that quality of, um, of uh, you know, looking for stability and constancy in life. This is where the planets really begin to gather in your ninth house, which is a house of the higher mind. It's a house of growth and expansion. And this is really the house that I was talking about in that first minute of this video when I said that you're going to be asking yourself, what does it all mean? And, um, and how can I, you know, uh, formulate a worldview that, that explains life to me? That's what the ninth house is for, and it helps us be resilient. So as the Taurus planets begin to gather in that house, you'll find that theme is coming up uh, pretty strongly, and that it increases around the 26th when we have the full moon in Scorpio, and that full moon falls in the third house of, um, of, of mind, of thought, of ideas, but also your immediate environment, so the people that are right around you all the time, such as housemates or siblings or neighbors. Now, the moon in Scorpio is a pretty intense feel, and full moons tend to be pretty relational. We tend to play them out in our relationships. So there may be some conflict with some really strong feelings that could pop up around this moon. And what it all comes back to and is grounded in is what do things mean in life? And how do I view the world and view life um, in a way that enables me to, to find happiness and meaning? So those things will come up during the full moon in Scorpio, which, by the way, we're calling focused obsession balanced with calm objectivity. Um, so I want to say just a little bit about Pluto, which is going to go retrograde this month. And if you've been watching these horoscopes over the last couple of months, you would notice 
that we've been talking about how this spring and this late winter has been a really great time for starting stuff, for initiating big projects, because there is a distinct lack of outer planets that are retrograde right now. And what that means is anything that you begin in this season will be advantaged to, um, to, um, to not have like built-in fault lines. But Pluto is going to go retrograde later this month and there it is, you see the tiny little RX, red RX symbol next to Pluto. And, um, and what that means is that there, there will be a built-in obstruction and that Pluto is uh, demanding that we go on an inward journey and that we transform and metamorphose some part of ourselves this year. Now, if you are having a Pluto transit this year, like you specifically are having one, you would know it because of the very distinct feeling that comes with the Pluto transit. It is a time when you feel, um, when you feel like you're melting down and you wanna cocoon yourself and protect yourself because you feel vulnerable, raw and exposed. And, and maybe you feel like you're in the grip of a larger process that's beyond your control and you have to face some inner demons. And all of that is really challenging. And in particular, if you have anything at all in your chart from 24 to 26 degrees of any cardinal sign at all, Capricorn, Aries, Cancer, or Libra, then you are having a Pluto transit and, um, and then you would be really feeling this retrograde pivot that's happening on the 27th and the 26th. And if you are, Julia and I are here and we can not only explain what that transit means, but also how to handle it for best results. And we can show you the very specific timing that it's gonna play out in. And sometimes just knowing when it's gonna end is, makes all the difference. Well, that's all we have for you today, Virgo. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please share it widely, like it, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology, where you will find the news of the month and, uh, and also horoscopes. And uh, you can also find us online at pandoraastrology.com with the horoscopes and the monthly forecast and readings that you can get and classes too. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.